I put week one of NFL football right up there with Christmas. The weather outside's perfect. Got a bowl of chili in my left, a Coors Light in my right. Whole family's decked out in Bengals gear. Even the dogs got it on. And I'm serious. My dogs, all the dogs there, have Bengals gear. They have Bengals jerseys. It's legit. So week one, who do we play? The Browns. Oh shit. We've lost four of the last five games against the Browns. But hey, back in January, we beat them. The curse is over. It's lifted. I could not have been any more let down and deflated watching that game yesterday. Let's start this video off the right way. I'm not going to make any bullshit excuses. The Cleveland Browns own the Cincinnati Bengals right now. Own us. Is it the elf in the middle of the field? Maybe. Who knows? It could be. That elf could be doing some sort of juju on us. Whatever it is, it is legit. They are a problem. The two worst games in recent memory I've seen the Cincinnati Bengals play have came against the Browns. Remember last year on Halloween, Monday Night Football? I was super hyped for that one. Got embarrassed. This one was worse. We have to give credit to the Browns. They have one of the best rosters in the NFL, top to bottom. Past couple years, Miles Garrett himself has said it, they have underperformed. Heading into the past couple seasons, they've been hyped up, they've been propped up as Super Bowl contenders, right? They let down, didn't show up, they folded, wasn't on par with expectations. They had bad seasons, they were letdowns. This year, they've been written off. Nobody's making a peep about the Browns. Deshaun Watson, I really do think, will bounce back this year. He's going to be solid. He didn't do anything special yesterday, but he made the plays whenever they needed him. He made the throws whenever they needed it. He made the runs. He did what he had to do to win. Nick Chubb, the proud owner of the Cincinnati Bengals, best running back in the league in my opinion, has been for a few years now, best pure running back. He is a beast, ran all over us, but hey, he does that to everyone. They have weapons all over the field. Amari Cooper, great veteran wide receiver right there. Playmaker. They brought in Elijah Moore, young stud from the Jets. David Njoku, hell of a tight end. They have a fast, strong, upper-level secondary. That was on full display yesterday. An elite pass rush that gives us nightmares every single time. Joe Burrow probably does have nightmares of Miles Garrett's face. It's just eight hours of sleep. Miles Garrett is right there for six of them, just smiling, looking over him after he sacked him. The Browns came out yesterday, unlike us, with something to prove. And they made a loud and clear statement. They dog-walked us. We're Super Bowl contenders. They're coming into our place. Okay, bring it on, Bengals. We'll show you how to play football in week one, since you clearly have forgotten over the past couple of years. I'm going to go ahead and give you all our rundown of our offensive possessions yesterday. Here we go. Punt, 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 punt. Field goal. We're back. Here we go. Let's go offense. Shooter. At least someone showed up to play. Psych. Next possession. Shooter missed a field goal. Punt. Turnover on downs. Punt. And you guessed it. Punt. 10 punts. A turnover on downs. This is a rough one, boys. This is a rough one. Not what I expected coming in, but hey, here we are. It's the reality of our situation. Let's let's get through this. We got this, all right? Statist statistically, Joe Burrow is the most accurate quarterback in NFL history. That accuracy was on full display yesterday. Joe was 14 for 31 for 82 passing yards. I have never seen Burrow play so bad in my life. I mean, he was missing throws that he makes with his eyes closed. Throws he can make in his sleep. His bread and butter, the back shoulder throw to one of our amazing wide receivers. He was missing by five feet. Stuff over the middle. He was just missing. He was completely off from the jump, and it didn't got bit. It, fuck. It didn't get better. That's the thing. I just kept waiting on him. I'm like, now's the time to do it. We're going to turn around right now. Boom, three and out. Next possession, three and out. Our rookie punter. He, got, he had himself a day. He got a lot of work in. His right leg's probably sore as hell. He might have to sit out practice. At the end of the day, he just, from the very start, Joe Burrow did not look comfortable. Our offense 
struggled is putting it very lightly. And I'm not going to use the weather as an excuse. I think that's, I think it's dumb. You know why? Because the Cleveland Browns were playing in that same exact weather on that same exact field. It's not an excuse. We've been there. We've done that. We've won in the elements. Hell, we beat the hell out of the Bills in Buffalo. Playoff game. Beat the hell out of them in the snow. T. Higgins targeted eight times. Zero catches. We had miscommunications between Burrow and the receivers. We don't ever see that. This game felt like a fluke. It really did. It felt like a fluke. This was nothing like our offensives looked over these past few seasons. This was brutal. I mean, we couldn't even line up right. We had a legal formation penalty. At what point does Callahan and Zach Taylor look at each other and be like, hey, Joe doesn't have it today. Let's get out of spread and let's get under center and at least attempt to establish a run. Joe Mixon, to me, was the highlight of our offense yesterday. He had a couple runs where he looked like retro. He looked like old Joe Mixon. He was running hard, running people over, running through people. Yeah, he did get bottled up a lot, but that's going to happen. They have a great D-line, but he did have some shining good runs. We needed to go back to that more. I understand we were down, but damn, whenever Joe's missing people by five feet, he was off yesterday. Everybody watching that game, that's not Joe Burrow. Who's that guy? If you've never seen Joe Burrow play quarterback and you watch that game, you think he's probably the worst quarterback in NFL history. That's not him. We know that's not him. He'll be fine. He'll be back. Like I said, I am not freaking out. I'm just extremely disappointed. I know as a fan base, we're all feeling that. Just pure disappointment. There's no other way to put it. Disappointed. We start out slow. Yes, last year, start out 0-2. Lost to the Steelers and the Cowboys. And then we only lost two games for the rest of the season after starting 0-2. Remember that. We start slow. I hate that that's our reality right now. But that's what it is. And it hurts so much more because it's a divisional opponent. The AFC is loaded. These games are going to matter. The AFC is so deep. There are so many playoff teams. There's a lot of playoff teams on paper that aren't going to make it. We'll be fine. We'll be in there. we got to turn around and turn around fast, which I believe full-heartedly we will. We have way too many weapons, way too much talent to put on an offensive performance such as we saw yesterday. Time of possession. Browns had it for 36 minutes, but did it not feel like they had it for 48? It felt like the Browns were on the offense the entire game. Our defense felt like they were out there all day. And shout out to the defense. They were a bright spot. They were putting pressure on Watson, sacked him three times, which was great. We finally got home. Last year, we had high pressure rate, couldn't get the quarterback down. First game, three sacks. Great start. Hendrickson was looking really good. We were putting a lot of pressure on him. New addition, free agent safety, Nick Scott, laid the stick on Deshaun Watson. Made him fumble, got a fumble recovery. Dax Hill got an interception off of one of our defensive linemen. I forget who it was right now. Tipped it, got an interception. We caused two turnovers on defense. They only had 24 points. I mean, by the time the end of the game, Nick Chubb was doing Nick Chubb things. He just wore our defense down. That's what he does to teams. And that opens up holes in the secondary because they get worn down. And Watson took advantage of those. He made the throws he had to make. He took off and ran when he had to do it. He didn't play good. He was missing throws too. The rain, obviously, wet ball, it's going to have some effect. We get that. But both teams have to play in it. They played in it. They made the plays. We didn't. <laughs> not at all. Really, really was not the video I was expecting to make. But if you look at it, I guess it makes sense. It was a perfect, this is not bullshit excuses. Maybe it is. I'm going to say it anyway. Burrow, is his calf completely healed? I don't know. He didn't look comfortable. It looked like he was moving around fine, but he definitely didn't look comfortable. Could that be because of the injury, or was it the time off? Could be a combination of the two. The rain, fuck that, dude. You throw the, your NFL quarterback, throw the ball in the fucking rain. Both teams are doing it. Get over that. I'm not freak. I did not want to make a negative video. It just stings so bad because it is the Browns, because it is a divisional game to come out that flat. It fucking sucks. I don't have too many words to describe it other than that. That was brutal. But, hey, man, it's not going to get any easier. We play Baltimore next week, who they struggled on offense too. 
Lamar Jackson and his new offense, new offensive coordinator, they didn't look good. They beat the Texans because the Texans are the Texans. But we know how this goes. They're going to be ready. They remember that. That playoff loss is in the back of their mind. They think they were going to beat us with the backup quarterback. They had a good shot at it. Hubbard made a ginormous play. Logan Wilson, Jermaine Pratt. By the way, Pratt had a hell of a performance yesterday. Pratt knocked it out. The rumble in the jungle. We won that playoff game. That is fresh in their minds. They're going to want to kill us. If we come out like that, I mean, if we come out and play like that, we won't lose. We won't win a game all year. Obviously, that's not going to happen. I believe that was that was flukish, definitely flukish. But at the end of the day, the Browns were obviously levels above us. They were better prepared. They executed way better. They beat our ass. It happens. Or it happened. It shouldn't happen. It happened. My mind's all over the place. It's crazy. I shouldn't. I'm trying to get better at this, too. Shouldn't let the Bengals' performance affect my mood. But I'm pissed off. I can't help it. I fucking love this team, dude. And I want to see them bring home a Lombardi. And to start a season off like that. Not the best start. But hey, week two. If we bounce back and beat the shit out of the Ravens. Another divisional matchup. Huge, massive game. We'll look back and be like, that was a massive win right there. That was a huge one. That was huge. Quick turnaround. If we come out, that'll be forgotten. And we need it now. We need to go right now. Make some tweaks. Offensive line. Overall, I thought they did okay. They'll gel. They're only going to get better. By far, this is the best offensive line we've ever had. Jonah Williams. I'm not going to get into that. But as a whole, this offensive line, I like. I'm a fan of. This offensive line is deep. He had time yesterday. Yes, he was under pressure on a the Browns have a good rush, all right? They're going to do that to a lot of teams. Miles Garrett, one of the best defensive pass rushers I have seen in a long time. Him, Micah Parson, oh, Bosa, freaking Watt on the Steelers. No excuses. We're a better football team than that. We all know that. We're going to be fine. Let's go kick the Ravens' ass this week. Forget about that, all right? Love you guys. Keep your heads up. We'll be fine. Fuck them. Who day?